We're here at the Sayu Business School and we have the privilege of talking to Lee McDonald. Lee, what do you do here? Um, well, my title is uh, Head of Learning and Development. So I look after the development, um, training needs of the staff. So I don't actually deliver to the students. Okay, cool. And you've been here for about three and a half years, you said? Yeah. All right. Gotcha. And Side Business School. So it's based in Oxford. We're in Kennington, but there's two parts. Um, what does it do? We do a range of things. So we're predominantly known for um, the business school as an MBA. So we right. have uh, students coming for the normal MBA. We have the executive MBA as well. We have degrees and diploma programmes. Um, but here at Kennington, we also do exec ed. So we do custom programmes and open as well. Okay. All right. Gotcha. And tell us something about yourself. Now, what they won't see is you've kicked off your shoes, which is brilliant. So we're barefoot. <laughs> which I, I promise you I won't tell them. Very me. Um, which is fabulous. Um, something about you, your background, where have you come from, why are you here? Um, well, I, I've had a couple of careers now. So I, I originally studied in illustration and design, um, mm. decided I couldn't sit at desk all day, it would drive me nuts. Um, quickly went into fitness, um, mm. spent eight years there sorting out failing clubs. Okay. Um, but completely worn me out, very, very long hours, <laughs> lots of responsibility. Um, right. So I thought, right, LMD, I can, I, I can do a nine to five in LMD. <laughs> um, How wrong you were, yeah. yeah. So I, saw, I started looking at it, playing with it, after seeing a career coach, and very quickly found um, MBTI, mm -hmm. so psychometric. Yeah. And then kind of steered my focus still on MBTI and, and the psychology of the side, but also LD as well. So I mixed the two. Okay. So I then trained in um, business psychology. So All right. a bit All right. of both. Well, side note, we've just built a, an ultimate guide, sorry, an ultimate inf infographic for MBTI. I might ask you to look at that, mm -hmm. come back to that. All right. The reason we're talking with you is because you're interested in office politics. Mm -hmm. That's something you've got uh, an interest in. We've got a whole bunch of questions from people on the web that are asking about positive office politics and negative. So we thought we'd grill Lee about it and see what she says. So one of the first questions that comes up is, what is a high performance culture? How would you say that's a high performance culture in a business? Well, I always think if you've got the, I say the basics, but those in themselves are pretty difficult. So you've got a good product and mm -hmm. a good service. You've got skilled staff that are fairly paid. Yep. Um, you've got good marketing and there are available customers. I think that you can't, that, yeah, it, yeah. you have to have the fundamentals in yeah. place. Um, if you've got all those and it's not performing, I always think it's this, there, there's something else. So yep. that's where I start looking at the culture of the place. And that's what really drew me to looking at office politics because it's been that scary, I always call it the elephant in the room that everybody knows about. Yes. Um, and everybody raises their eyebrows when you mention it. And I quite like the idea of, kind of focusing on the positive side of it because those skills are there as yep. well. Yep. So a, a high performing culture is all of those things I've already mentioned, but actually having a really good, good culture in place and in using office politics in a very positive way to encourage people to do their best. Okay. So when, when I think of office politics, I think of the corporate that I worked in for a long time and office politics was those horrible things where people were just playing cloak and dagger. So is it that we're talking about as well? Yes, yeah, so, well, not the positive ones. <laughs> no. So um, I've actually created a four quadrant model and definitely the negatives are in there, right. but okay. there's also a positive element to it as well. So yes, you've got the backstabbing and the gossiping hmm. and the game playing, yeah, you've got all of those and it's a, that's a very destructive side of it. But you've also got the, the positives. So you've got the networking, the collaboration, the reciprocity, the definitely the paying it forward, the, the real working together. Sure. And they're all, they're all parts of how things get done. 
and okay. that's how I see how we get stuff done quality. around here. Yeah. Right. How we get stuff done around here, so it can okay. either be really negative or actually turn to a real positive. Okay, so just go through that. So the positive office politics. So what are what are things that people should be doing that they're not doing, or how do they turn it around? So for, for I'm, I'm thinking about my quadrants here. Yeah. So the, the things that are mostly on that quadrant is um, the behaviours in that element are a liberal culture. So what I mean by that is that ideas and decisions are made by all. Okay. So it doesn't matter where you are, yep. your ideas and creativity and innovation and encouraged to play almost is, is really encouraged. So you can still have a hierarchical structure, yeah. but it doesn't matter where you are, your ideas are brought up to the surface. So really liberal culture. Yeah. And then the other yeah. side of it yeah. is yeah. Um, communication. And I don't mean internal comms, I mean clarity around the pure goal of the organisation. What, what should everybody be working towards? Mm -hmm. Um, what are their roles within that and what are their ever-changing responsibilities because I, I think JD's run out within six months of starting a job they're completely different so what are the true roles and responsibilities okay yeah what are they working on what is everybody else working on so a really good communication across and a real clarity about why they're there and what they can do whilst they're there Okay. Um, Not just that. Gone, it's also yeah. the other way as well. So actually, what do their managers do? How? What do they need from their managers to be able to do that? So it's a, it's a real two way feedback structure as well. Okay. Okay. So let's come back and talk about the liberal culture. So we're talking about ideas that come to the top or suggestions or feedback, and people out there are probably think, yeah, that's all good. I I I know it's right. How do I do it? First off, I would say um, in organisations, if you've, if you've got some of the negatives, you need to remove those first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are the hindering forces? And if they are behaviours, you need to locate what they are first. So what, how do we diagnose those behaviours initially? Once you know them, mm -hmm. then you can deal with them. Okay. Um, and most of the time, it's simply calling it out. Oh, right. yeah. Calling those behaviours out, and that needs to be done from the very top, and a real agreement that that's what they're going to do throughout the organisation. Um, I read the other day a really nice, nice quote. I can't remember which book it was in. Um, they said, "Stop just opening your door and saying my door's open. Okay. Start walking through." It. Right. Okay. and being yeah. with the people yeah. because that's the only way you will really get that um, real good relationship where people can actually talk to you not always wanting them to come into your your safe space and that's quite right. intimidating, it's like going to the headmaster's yeah. office <laughs> so stop saying your door's open <laughs> go out and don't have a door in the first place just be part of the workforce I like that that's so good. that, that I, I love that quote because it, it's just so telling because I hear it from so many leaders. My door's always open, yeah. It's quite weak, isn't it? it yeah, it's like, well, you come to me. Yeah, because I'm the boss. Yeah. All right, yeah, like that. It's good. So person. no more doors open. No more right, doors lovely. open. Get out there. Yeah. Um, and then and, and creating that really good feedback culture, I think, is absolutely essential. So putting that in um, from day one in your induction and actually teaching people how to provide feedback oh that's good so like that. practicing it from day one yeah. in the first day of your induction you know you need to say that is our culture here and we would expect to hear from you just as we will give you feedback and, and without putting words in your mouth, we're not talking about feedback in terms of let's have two hours in a room and I'm going to tell you what, what I think. We're talking about very quick, short feedback on this piece of behaviour. Everything. Right. Okay. Yeah, so a really open, honest environment where people yeah. can give that immediate feedback, can give honest feedback. If there's a project, we're having a wash up. Right, let's be really open and honest about this with each other. Yeah. Um, let's look at the work, not the person. 
Okay. And then yeah. also in your one to ones when you're having that. So if you if your manager can help you in some way or can adapt their style to you. Um, I always say, for me, I, I love being busy. I can't, but too much admin is too much. So anything over 30%, <laughs> if I have more than 30%, I start getting a little bit antsy. Right. So I make sure my boss knows that. Okay. And if, if it turns that way, that's where you can help me. And that's, I mean, that, that involves having great self-awareness. I mean, we work with some people who just haven't got a clue about their own self-awareness. Mm. You clearly have. Okay, all right, so the first part is them being self-aware. Yep. Getting to that 30% as an example, sharing that with your boss. Okay, I get it. I love the bit also about in your induction, we're going to teach you about feedback and what behaviours are acceptable. Yeah. Okay. How are things done? How Being really yeah. Yeah. honest about it, this is the way we work, and these are the behaviours we really don't like, and, yeah. and constantly checking on that. There's a film, A Few Good Men, with Tom Cruise, yes. and there's a bit where he's grilling one of the guys on the stand, and he says, here's the book of how we do things. But how did you ever get to the, the, the canteen? Yeah, it? I the, followed the, everyone else. I followed everyone else. Was, ah, that's brilliant. Because yeah. that's all the stuff that's not written. Love it. Love it. Okay, so you talked about liberal culture, we we're talking about suggestions coming to the top, mm -hmm. we we're talking about giving feedback, that reminds me, we did an interview with Lord Mark Price and he said feedback was given once every four months at the moment, according to a latest study. Then it's crazy. And you think, wow, jeez. Okay, all right, so let's come back to our questions, that's good. Um, high performance culture, characteristics, okay, let's talk about how do you make the shift from negative office politics to positive? You give feedback. What else can you do? I, like I said, I think the first thing is to recognise what it is. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. So uh, the, the model I'm using is actually three other quadrants of not so good behaviours. Right. So. Is it that you've got a very autocratic culture, i.e. decisions and creativity is only done at the top? Yeah. And have you got really unclear, ambiguous communication? There's no clarity. So that is what I call um, a self-serving culture. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's, that really is holding on to information, um, lots of gossiping, lots of blame, really destructive competition so that's that's a, a very particular type of organization i yeah. think that's the one that everybody thinks about automatically probably yeah so that, that's the, the, this. the yeah. worst Good one sure. um the next one up from that so it's still autocratic culture yeah. but you've got real clarity on roles and responsibility and everybody knows where they stand so i i call that drone okay Drone. So, right. yeah, yeah, you right. know yeah. what was expected of you, but yeah. you're not expected to share ideas. It's one-way communication. You are told to do something and you do it. Okay. So there's real disempowerment there. Um, generally creates a lot of moaning. Think of a few companies I know. Yeah, yeah. okay, gotcha. Um, and it's very static and, and very slow-moving and generally quite high turnover because there's only so long that you can get that stamped out of you. Yeah. So there's more focus on um, definitely pay on that side of things. There's no benefit. There's no learning and um, creativity involved there at all. Yeah. And then the final one yeah, go on. is the liberal culture, but real ambiguous grey communication. Okay. And I call that chaos. Okay, I had fluffy in mind. Chaos, yeah. <laughs> Chaos, no, that's good. And I always think of startups when I think of this. So everybody's been really creative and innovative because they're yeah. really encouraged to. So all the ideas are come, all the ideas are there. Lots of big work's being done. Very, very, very busy. So they're quite tired and stressed because yeah. of it. Makes sense. But it's all wasted because they're not communicating with each other. Yeah. So the the kind of one person's inventing a wheel over here and then doing the same thing over here. So that is the the, yeah. the kind of l lack of communication there really disables and doesn't use what they have in place. So I'm going to try and bring it to life for these guys because in your head it's it's clear. I, I'm nearly there. So we've got four. We've got the drone, the autocratic, the liberal, 
So drone. Yeah. Go on. Self-centered. Oh, oh, self-centered. Yeah. Drone or oh, self-centered. Chaos. Chaos, yeah. Which are the three not so great ones. Yeah. And then finally, I've, I've called the, the lovely one, I'm calling it Utopia. Utopia, okay. Right. Um, it took a while to come to that name because I could have called it high performing or something like that, but it didn't quite suit with the other ones. And actually, will we ever truly get there? So it's constantly. Uh, all right, an end game to aim for. Yeah. Right. So let's just make sure I've got Utopia. Chaos, self centered, self serving, self serving, and drone. Is it right? There are four. Yeah. So there are four in our four Boston Matrix. What are the two axes for the Boston Matrix? How liberal they are and how autocratic? Where in culture. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So what we'll do is we'll try and put um, a link on here so people can see that. So what I'm going to do is we're trying to get that in our heads. Try and give us, for each of those, let's see if you and I can come up with a company we might put in each box. And oh. hopefully we won't get sued. <laughs> so, <laughs> so who could we see as chaos? You said startup. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, kind of, sorry guys, entrepreneurials, that, that kind of, they've just come up with the yeah. idea. Okay. Maybe something in um, marketing or media. Yeah. Um, that sounds a bit weird, but because they're, they're, they're lots of pop-ups yeah. to, to make a TV program, for instance, and lots of people come together, so there's not great cons because they hardly know each other, so pop-up teams, very innovative and creative, yeah. but not great communication. So they're innovative, they're creative, lots of suggestions, but their communication's a bit pants. Yeah. Okay, so I'm thinking of an interview I read many years ago with Martha Lane Fox, who did lastminute.com and she said she described the early days of lastminute.com as headless chickens on amphetamines. So maybe that's it. And it's, it's not saying it's a bad yeah. thing, it's just saying that's, and yeah. it worked, it clearly yeah. worked. So, you know, these aren't all bad. All right, so we've got chaos. Chaos is probably lastminute.com, as they were then. Okay. What's your next one? Um, oh. Who are we looking at next? Which box? I, 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 I don't like to name the company. Um, but the drone, I always think drone? of... Yeah. Um... So just describe those for us. What's positive and negative about the drone? The drone is that everybody knows what their job is. Absolutely. Everybody knows, knows why the company is or organisation is there. Yeah. Absolutely. There's clarity. The work gets done. Okay. The work gets done. It's not necessarily innovative. The suggestions aren't coming to the top. Very disempowered. Right. Yeah. Disempowered. You do your job and then you go home. Okay. Well, I'll happily say, well, I think it's like HSBC Bank. Ooh. Clearly very successful. It's just very... And I guess a bank has to be. Yep. Who did you have in mind? Um, I always think of quite. I, I come from Cornwall, and uh, there's quite, <laughs> quite a few families that own um, oh. multiple hotels, oh, and okay. they, they kind of run them like. And I can say it because I'm Cornish. Um, like they used to run them in the 1980s. Oh. It's very command and control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I always think that people go in, they work there, they know their job, it's very clear, but they, they heaven forbid, them thinking outside the box. Right. And they, they try to sometimes avoid the rules and regulations, employees, okay. because they're trying to find that power that yeah, they haven't yeah. got. Yeah, nice. There was a programme a while ago about a guy who ran a hotel in Torquay, wasn't there? I don't watch TV. He, um, he was very creative and the staff were, I think he lost them, he was too creative. But he had to turn it around in a year, otherwise it went under. Mm. Actually, not a good story because it went under. <laughs> right, let's do the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so we've got our chaos, this is lastminute.com. We've got our drone, HSBC, Cornish Hotel. Who's next? In our Boston Matrix. Um, the self-serving is self -serving. The, the last one. And that's basically the very autocratic culture and a real lack of communication and clarity. Oh, okay. Well, that's a tough one. Okay. I'm stuck. Who have you got in mind? See, uh, when I talk to people about this, 
everybody says, well, that's my place. Oh, so okay. it's, it's quite funny. We, we, we see a lot of behaviours in a lot of organisations that are there. Um, but one in particular... It's a hard one. Right, just what you think, try and bring it to life for me a bit more. So autocratic, what else is positive, what else is negative? So that lack of communication. There's not a lot of positives, to be honest. Oh, okay. I've been I've been trying to find some, um, just to kind of even it up a little bit, but there there isn't. Right. Okay. Really. I, I, I think a business that sits there for too long is is going to go down a very slippery path because if they're not innovative if they're only making decisions at the top, that's very, very slim line. And if they're not communicating properly and having clarity with their staff, that does create the worst culture right. internally. And that's just gonna very quickly bleed out externally. Okay. So autocratic versus, sorry, self-centered versus drone. Um, what's the difference? The difference being is um, the the self serving. There's not cl absolute clarity of where that organisation is going. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, gotcha. So it could be that market is changing. Yeah. It yeah. could be that um, they were definitely doing one product, but they're, they're kind of lost in that market now, and they haven't got a clear direction. Uh, um, okay. It could be that they haven't had a, a CEO in place for a little while. So there's no real clear figurehead. Yeah. Um, it could be that society's just changed and actually the goals that they had then don't really play now. Okay. All right. So I'm starting to think I worked for Sainsbury's for 15-ish years. Back in the 90s, we sort of lost the JD Sainsbury. He, he was the guy who said, this is where we're going and this is how we'll do it. And then he sort of retired and moved on and he was retailer's detail. And I think we got to that place then. Okay, that reminds me of that company and its culture then. Who did you have in mind? <laughs> I really don't want to say. Um, she doesn't want to say. I don't like to say. I, I have, I, I do find that a lot of non-for-profits Okay. Sit there. So I'm, I'm backing out of naming a particular one. But, right, but not for profit. Not All for right. profit. And, and, and surprisingly, quite a few um, charities as well. All right. And, and why are they in that box? Um, I th Those it's, companies. This is a, there's, a, there's a load of needs that aren't being met. So okay. if, I, if I don't know my job properly, I don't know the true pathway that I can yeah. take. I've, I'm quite, I'm, I'm going to try and find something. Uh, if there's not a clear career pathway, I'm going to make it. Yeah. If there's not clear communication, actually knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. okay. um, generally not that well paid either. So what is that power? What is that going to feed? So there's, there's, I think there's loads of reasons why it's there in the first place, but I'd say not for Profits and charity, okay. most of the profits. I thought that was all right. So, you're developing this Boston Matrix around office politics for companies, mm -hmm. not individuals. No, there's loads, there's loads of loads stuff because I remember there's a model I don't know what it's called about the sly fox, the owl, and yeah. stuff. So, that's about individuals and how they deal with office politics. This is about companies and culture around office politics. Yeah, okay. All right, so you saw it here first. Lee's coming up with something. She's probably going to write a book on it oh. or encouraging us. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll try and put a draft of that, if you'll allow us, yeah. on, on, on there so that people can see it. So let's say I'm a HR manager or I'm a HR director or even a CEO. And I'm looking at your Boston Matrix and I'm thinking, we're there. Um, I can see which box we're in. I've accepted which box. And let's say it's one of the three not so good boxes. I want to get to the utopian box. Actually, we didn't do utopia. Let's do that for a minute. Oh, utopia. I, I'm oh, not utopia sure it come. exists. Mm. Who, um, who's close to it? And just describe utopia for us whilst we both um, think. Utopia is real freedom and um, encouragement to play with ideas and be creative, no matter where you are in the company. Right. We can all think of 
Well, I'm, I'm automatically thinking of Google. Oh, yeah, Google. Um, they can give them one day a week now to work on whatever they Yeah, want. which is really encouraging risk-taking as well. Yeah, yeah. Which means you're not going to get blame if it goes wrong. It's just playing with yeah. ideas. And that's how we that's how we get creative, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, because it is. we, we don't, because we think it's going to be blamed. There's risk to it, so we don't yeah. want to balls off anywhere. So, actually encouraging that as part of the culture, I think, is absolutely essential. Um, and being Google A Communications, pretty much a communications baseline, it's where yeah. we all go to learn things. So I would expect that there's a very clearly defined goal that they have in mind. This is what we do. I mean, well, the mission is very clear. Yeah, sorry. Considering yeah. The, the every Joe public pretty much knows yeah. what there is, I would think sure. it was inside sure. as well. Yeah. And there's quite clearly defined roles within that company as well so seems to be doesn't it okay so i would i would actually i would name a company and that would be google. so google's our utopia and i guess it is for many things um is there one closer to home because google we probably revere as they're doing everything brilliantly who knows if they're like bow down to yeah them. bow down to google <laughs> um as my cousin calls them um anyone else closest home we can think of a brand I guess Apple, but again, they're revered for most things. I'm trying to think of those smaller brands that maybe just getting it right. Innocent, possibly, you know, when they were going through their growth phase. Uh, I think they were a bit more chaos. You think they're more mad? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it's, it's when, when companies have that initially and then come out of it at the other side. Yeah. So. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, let's come back to our previous question before I forgot the fourth quadrant, which was the main one. Utopia. So I'm a company, I'm in one of, the, one of the three boxes, let's say. I'm trying to get to Utopia. The things I can do to get there encourage feedback and show people how to do feedback. Yes, was one of them. yeah. Identify behaviours, you said. First thing is identify First thing, behaviors. identify behaviours. And then the feedback. What else can I do? What can I go and practically put in play that will help me to make this stuff work? The, the internal comms is, is a really big thing, and I think okay. it's very um, underutilised and not that... It's kind of like a tap-on to marketing, or it's a tap-on to HR. It's, it's very undervalued, and yeah. actually it's one of, one of the absolute key roles within an organisation. Okay. And I think if they are very, very closely working with HR, the, and anything that's um, bringing out new creativities and innovation within the, the organisation, so for different projects that have been working on and groups that are doing that. I think if you've, if you've sorted your internal comms out and they are really working with the company throughout, I think that is really vital. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think that... So internal comms, yeah. Come back to that. Yeah. yeah. I think that managing performance is really vital as well. Yep. So if you haven't got clarity about what your role is and what's expected of you, you're going to either sit back and relax mm -hmm. and wait to be told when you turn into a drone, or you go around finding things to do. <laughs> yeah. um, and that quite often goes into the self-serving thing because you're just trying to find a project to you're work to on. Work. And that's when yeah. you're, you're treading into other people's turf and yeah. annoying other people and it could get quite backstabby at that point yeah, so like that. really i mean it's i think we all we all know it that's the thing yeah, it's okay. really really simple good internal comms really good performance management and simple concise performance management so, all right um what, why did you say simple and concise so people really get it okay all right so i'm gonna just ask you a couple of questions about internal comms. So if you go to a business and the CEO or the HRD is saying, we do internal comms. We send out emails all the time. We talk to our people. What would you go and how would you go and assess them or talk to them or find out if it works? Um, I think it's more the case of it's not just talking at them. Okay. So a lot of internal comms focuses, focuses out. Yeah, true. We've got news outwards, which is great. Yeah. But there's, there's, there's people involved here. So this is why social media has exploded. People want to have their say. So 
there's there's new systems coming in. I think Fuse is one of them that it's really thought of. So they this. actually source learning and information and knowledge, and it comes from the people. Oh, okay. Wow. It comes from the people. So everybody's sharing in groups automatically, like Facebook or LinkedIn, yeah. but within a company. And I think that that is so much more powerful because it doesn't have to go through this funnel yeah. of internal comms and branding police. It doesn't have to go through <laughs> that. It's <laughs> actually living itself. So if I'm a HRD and I want to do something practical and simple that improves my internal comms, might I set up a Facebook group? Would I set up listening groups? What would you suggest? I, I would say there's loads of systems out there. Just choose okay. the best one for you. Right. Um, so there's some sort of system that might help my internal comms? Yeah. Right. Or Facebook group if you really want to go down that path. Some people feel a bit icky about that. Yeah. I mean, I, I like to keep my yeah, Facebook uh, just for me and my personal stuff. And lo and behold, they... they Interact. Yeah. Um, LinkedIn, you could do something yeah, on there. Could do. A lot of systems like 365 have got groups available there as well. They have a lot of intranets that are coming through can actually have chats as well. So there's loads of ways of doing it. Yeah. We, we're working with a company who recently sent out uh, a lot of posters, Ask the Board, which I thought was a nice step, mm -hmm. which was where anyone could put questions to the board and they were guaranteed to answer them in 48 mm -hmm. hours or whatever it was. Um, maybe that's a nice yeah. step. All right. I'm also um, yep. starting to create, um, I haven't quite got the title for it yet, but it's, it's, it's going to be around entrepreneurial. So okay, one of our um, values is entrepreneurial. Yeah. So we're going to do something inside and actually design a program that will encourage anybody, whether they're a cleaner or a kitchen porter or a reception staff or to office-based staff, to finance, and anybody within an organisation can partake in this programme. Mm. And it will be um, work around being creative, presentation skills, how to influence. And we're hoping that we we'll find um, entrepreneurial mentors for these groups. Wow. They will come together and create an idea around what idea have you got to um, change the school for the better? And it could be something like how we interact with the local community, or yep. it could be a how can we become greener? But then they they kind of create that idea, really bring it to life with their mentor, and then they will deliver it back to a group of I'm calling it Dragon's Den because I'm yeah. stealing yeah. stealing the title, yeah. and that will be people that are in positions of power. So things like hopefully the dean will get involved in a couple of our faculty, but also people that are a little bit more grounded as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people like a head of the states that will go, great idea, but in practice. Yeah. And if that idea is a good one, actually taking those people and helping them as a group put that idea into action rather than stealing the idea. That's good. And I think a lot of companies go, thank you very much, we have that, and we give it to these people over here, and not actually develop the team yeah, yeah. and the group yeah. Yeah. in the first place. So I think that, that really does encourage real, um, we give you permission. Okay. And we will good. help you take time out of your normal role, no matter what it is, and we give you the skills and develop you and not pigeonhole you into a particular role. Like that reminds me some years ago we I was invited to be on Twinings. Twinings had a four hundred person conference where they sort of went off and did that type of thing. And I was one of the dragons that they pitched to at the end. Um, which was a privileged position. But most importantly, they were coming up with some genius ideas. Yeah. And they were coming from the floor. Yeah. From anyone. Yeah. So they, they know the customers. They, 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 they have got that hands on and they could come up with uh, what seems like a ridiculously stupid idea, but yeah. actually a really powerful one in the process. Right. The second part you talked about was managing performance. You said simple and concise. So again, we've dropped you onto a, a company. They're in one of the three bad boxes um, for office politics. What would you recommend they change to have simple and concise performance management? For me, it's it's... It's quite often being led by the line manager. Okay. So they have a set of questions they need to ask. Yep. 
um, and they provide their feedback to their team member. Mm -hmm. So it's really turning it round to having an adult professional conversation yep. between two people, no one particularly leading it, and having simple questions like feedback. So what have you got? How are you initially? A little yeah. bit of relationship building. Yeah. Um, not going straight into the work. So have you got any feedback for me? Yep, this good. is what feedback I've got for you. So a really good conversation about how you are feeling yep. at this present time. Well, I'm not sure we can do that. Particularly a British male. <laughs> All right. Then what have you been working on? Yeah. How how have your objectives if you want to if you want to put them in that or how is this project going? Just keep those but keep that quite small. And then what are we working towards? And it's almost like that's all it really needs. Hopefully learning will be in there somewhere as well, but it's almost, it, it doesn't need to be any more than four or five questions. Good, I, I'm a big advocate of that. We've worked with companies, it's, it's not our bag, but we've seen companies who have an appraisal system that's nine pages, <gasps> and you think that's a pointless waste of time. And it was, um, their feedback, not ours. Um, and you think if you just had those four or five questions, brilliant, let's start there. It encourages, adult conversation yes. not yes. a i'm your boss parent and you are child yeah. subordinate yeah. straight away to conversation rather than a tick box exercise which it so often moves towards and, and this was a particular company i'm thinking of it was a fun filling exercise mm -hmm. and the, the people were put under pressure to get their forms in yeah didn't matter what the conversation was so they just filled them out on their own <laughs> Brilliant. And Got a lot. How it. does one form that's nine pages long actually work for all areas of the organisation? So, for, for instance, here we've got a dining room team, and their their, their roles are quite simple. Yeah. And they had loads of questions in there that completely didn't yes. apply, yes. and it made them feel devalued yeah. because it's like, well, that doesn't apply to me. So, why are you giving me this form? You haven't really thought about what our job in its own right. So if it, the more yeah. simple you make it, the more conversational it is, the less they will feel that. I completely agree. I, um, just a little bit about me on this for a moment. Mm -hmm. I, uh, in, a, in a real job many years ago, I, my boss did my appraisal and he wrote 127 things and he went through them that I'd done wrong in the previous year. And, and he went through them. So I said to him, so some of these things I did 11 and a half months ago wrong, he said yes. And you've waited till now, he said yes. And you've saved them. <laughs> and he had them, he's very proud, one, two, 127. Wow. And you think that's exceptional. Oh, you I, I, um, that 11 months ago. Could have done. Wow. So, and actually I've repeated the same mistake every month because it was a, a routine task. Oh. But he waited till the appraisal. Right, so he's got into a really bad habit by that point. I think he didn't have a clue, that's how everyone else did it. And, and I learned a huge amount from him because everything I've learned about people management, I just did the opposite to what he did. <laughs> yeah, that's what we generally do, isn't it? Learn from the worst. <laughs> All right, so I'm just conscious of our time, your time. We're talking about positive, of, positive office politics. I think I actually sent you and said, let's call it pop. Okay, <laughs> I just wanted to, to corner that here before I might patent it later. And we're talking about uh, Boston Matrix. We've got three that are not good, mm -hmm. one that is good, Utopia, and that's one we want to aim for. Identifying behaviours, feedback, uh, internal comms, managing performance, the things we do to get from here to there. All right. So let's ask you one more time around. I'm a HR director, a HR manager. I'm thinking about our office politics. I've heard of this model around the, the owl and the fox. I get that's about individuals. This is about companies. What else would you suggest I go and do? I just figure out which box we're in or how I make a change. Come to me. Come to, <laughs> um, that's the pitch. Yeah, um, because it need, uh, I've, I've got a diagnostic tool oh. for this. So oh. it, it's, it's a survey, um, but it actually directly asks questions around those behaviours. Okay. So it can actually pull out all the different behaviours, all the different boxes and ask questions around those. 
So that would go out to the employees and yeah. you, you can actually get a very clear picture. Okay. And I always think it needs an external for so that because to, yeah. it means that I, I, I don't care who the person is. I don't, I don't need any of the other information that would actually say, oh, it's you that said it. Yes. And I think that's the fear of, particularly if you have got negative office politics, that's definitely a fear because there's a real blame culture there as well. So actually having a survey around it to pull out those behaviours so you can actually directly plot it. Because yeah. chances are you've got three boxes. It might be that you don't beautifully, beautifully uh, fit into one box. box. It yeah, might be fair. a couple of the other boxes as well. So that's, okay. that's the best way to look at it. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm just seeing if there are any other questions we haven't asked you that would help the people out there in terms of office politics. Um, I'm just going to ask you one more and then we'll, then we'll wrap up. If I was looking at a business, what indicators would I see that would help me to understand which box I'm in? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, my belly's rumbling. I don't think we can hear it. I, I would say it's the behaviours that you're seeing. Okay. It's, it's the best way. It's very visual. So if you are seeing people in little clicky groups ah, going off. Clicky groups, right. Is yep. it that people are working to contract? Oh, okay. That That's a definite drone. Yep. It's like, are they just coming in, doing their job, going home? Which is, is, is you need those worker bees, absolutely. But yep. how much is that happening? How much is the, the the communication actually happening as well? Do people want to speak up? Um, and how stressed are they? We we keep on. I mean, this is why I went down this path originally. Is I keep hearing lots of HR L and D people asking for resilience and stress training. Um, yep, and that's that's what's coming up in my needs yep. analysis. Things around mental health and well being. So we've got all these things being requested. That's the symptoms. Yes, okay. And I really think that we're, we're spending so much money and time helping people cope with what uh, is okay. actually happening. Um, yes, we need to help them whilst it's yeah. happening. Absolutely, it's, it's our responsibility too because we, we own the culture. Yeah. However, you also want to fix the problem because you're going to be uh, continuously okay. fixing or yeah. helping people deal with the symptoms so uh, i think it's for me it's a, it's a two-way thing it's a bit of both. right when you said that i was trying to come up with a metaphor not very successfully so Let's you're talking about a plaster on a broken leg right okay okay i was thinking about if you've got a cold so you're so the stress and resilience training is once you've got a cold we're dealing with it's a bit like taking a lemon but yeah. before we ought to be dealing with why you're getting cold. Well, um, yeah. I like that. Okay. All right. Eat well. Brilliant. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to share with us around high performance culture that you haven't mentioned so far? I don't think so, actually. Sure. Cover it on. Yeah. We emptied your head. That was a moment. Okay. All right. Well, watch out for Lee's book that no doubt will come out. <laughs> she hates writing, but I, I think... I need a ghostwriter. You get a ghostwriter. It'll all be her work, but uh, written by a ghostwriter. Lovely to talk to you. This is a wonderful place at Surrey Business School. Absolutely love it here. I want to come and work here. Um, and we shall see you probably once you've formulated your Boston Matrix even more mm -hmm. and turned it into something that's no doubt gone worldwide. A bit like the Barcelona way. We're interviewing... Um, What's his name? I've got his name, Barcelona Way. Dan comes to mind, but we're interviewing him soon. So uh, when you're holding your book, we'll interview you again. Cool. Thank you, Lee.